Hello, we're looking at Puppies Today by Jane Ware. She was born in Salford in 1963 and she currently lives and works in Derbyshire. She has spent several, several years in Belfast in Northern Ireland and all of these um, experiences that she has will colour her work. So let's begin. Today we are going to identify and explore the speaker's emotional journey. I have added a challenge objective which is to consider and evaluate the poet's use of imagery. Now before we begin, I would like you to look at the word semantics. Please write the meaning in your own words down. So I would advise to stop this recording right now and have a go at writing the definition. Okay, so semantics, we're looking at a range of different things and I'll talk you through it. So we're looking at symbolism, what words represent, what they stand for. We're looking at the connotation, the associated ideas of a word. So really drilling down to um, a deeper level. We're looking at denotation, so the dictionary definition, the literal meaning of a word. We're also looking at etymology, and that is the origin of words. Homophones, which is when a word sounds like another word, but it's spelled differently. And then grammar, word classes, so your verbs, your nouns, your adjectives, etc. I would like you to look at this picture. What does it, the image suggest to you? So we see a field of poppies, we see the red, and right now focus on the connotations. What could the red suggest? What could it suggest to you? Could it suggest danger, love, loss? And it's about putting all those symbolism and drilling down when, when you start to analyze the point. Again, I would like you to look at these pictures of soldiers. So now we know that as the title suggests, it's going to be about puppies, but it's also going to have something to do with soldiers. And these soldiers, they're kitted up, they're ready to fight. And then another set of pictures. So really um, linking these associations and these connotations. So we have a field of puppies. We have people gathered around, seems very ceremonial. And then we have some women, it seems like they're suffering a loss, maybe coming from a funeral, etc. So Jane Ware, this was a quote from her. She said, I wrote the piece from a woman's perspective, which is quite rare, as most poets who write about war have been men. As the mother of two teenage boys, I tried to put across how I might feel if they were fighting in a war zone. From the overwhelming response I have had since it was published, I hope that I have achieved that. So we're going to now focus on this woman's perspective of her son, feeling the loss of her son. Have you or anyone you have known been affected by the war? And if yes, then when you're reading this poem, I would like you to just think about that emotional journey that we said at the beginning of the learning objective, the emotional journey of this mom as she thinks about her son. What would a son say about war? What are some of the words and phrases that a son would say? They've been in the war, they've experienced this firsthand. 
what would they say? Would they say they were fearful? Or it was abominable. It was a hateful um, experience, an atrocity. Would they say it was tough? Or they saw a lot of blood? Or would they say, you know what, I'm so proud to have fought in this war? What about a mother? What would a mother say about war? And it's going to be maybe some different words, some different emotions. So would a mother say they were anxious while their child was in the war? Would they say they were also proud to have such a heroic son? Would they be worried? Would they be fearful? Would they be angry? Would they be hopeful? So, the poem makes us think about the pain and difficulty of a loss, definitely. And also the personal price that a family has to pay because no one wants to lose a loved one and war takes loved ones away. What about the value of remembrance, remembering these heroic men who have gone and fought in the war? So we're going to now, I'm going to read this poem and we're going to start to unpick the poem. Three days before Armistice Sunday and puppies had already been placed on individual war graves. Before you left, I pinned one onto your lapel, crimped petals, spasms of paper red, disrupting a blockade of yellow bias binding around your blazer. We can hear the voice of the mom here, can hear her voice and hear her emotions. So it is before Armistice Sunday. So there's a repetition there which emphasizes the parallel between the national and personal mourning and remembrance. And you're going to hear that when she says, before you left. We hear about the individual war graves. It's an ominous reminder that war kills individuals. So loss is very personal. Then it talks about disrupting a blockade, which suggests that she feels shut out from her son's life. She's not a part of this. She didn't go to war with him. And we hear about the spasms, which makes the reader think of an injured body. So it's really ominous from the first stanza. We're getting really senses of the loss, the pain. Then you hear about your blazer and a lot of schools wear blazers. So could it be um, a school uniform or it could be an army one. So there, that um, hint of childhood there. And remember, this is from a mother's perspective. So we talked about Armistice Day and I told you it's also called Remembrance Day. And it's on the 11th of November, it commemorates the armistice which signed between the allies of World War One. So all of that, as um, this poem is about remembrance of those who fought for their country. And the poet has used this to explore her own feelings of loss and remembrance. So that's really is a deep embedded thing, that remembrance that's lost, and it's going to be repeated throughout. We spoke about um, the remembrance. We, let's look at the rhyme. We know that, you know, that's one thing we need to look at the rhyming patterns if there is um, any rhyming pattern. So there's no regular rhyme or rhythm in this poem. And this helps because it makes it sounds like someone thoughts, their memories, you know, it, it's not linear, it's all over the place, it's confused. 
their long sentences and we have enjambement as well and gives the impression of someone so absorbed in their own thoughts and their memories. The poem starts with her son leaving and then it goes on to describe what she did afterwards. But the time frame in the poem is ambiguous, right? There's a lot of images which could almost describe a young child going to school for the first time. We talked about the blazer. And then the use of the words. And, you know, we spoke about blockade, which suggests that she feels shut out of her son's life. And then let's go back to blazer. We talked about the semantics of language and how we need to look at connotations. So the metaphorical blazer, which could be a school uniform as well as an army one, represents her pride for her son. Because we you know we wear our, our uniform with pride. Second stanza. Sellotape bandaged around my hand. I rounded up as many white cat hairs as I could, smoothed down your shirt's upturned color, steal the softening of my face. I wanted to graze my nose across the tip of your nose, play at being Eskimos like we did when you were little. I resisted the impulse to run my fingers through the gelled black thorns of your hair. All my words flattened, rolled, turned into felt, slowly melting. So the bandage makes the reader think of an injured body or a mother tending to her injured son. And it has further connotations suggesting she's emotionally wounded, which we can understand a mother losing a son. The mothering tone continues when she treats him like a child and you know that is through a mother will always be a mother a mother it doesn't matter how old you are a mother will still think of you as such so that mother in tone there is alliteration there where it says teal the softening so we have alliteration right here steeled the softening and of my face so the steel the softening is the alliterative phrase and it emphasizes that she's trying to be brave and not show any emotion and then that bit where it talks about play at being eskimos so play at being eskimos and you know, little kids growing up, growing up, you um, do Eskimo kisses with them. So play at being Eskimos, it contrasts with the harsh reality he faces, he now faces. So, you know, Eskimo kisses is when you do, you rub your noses together. So it is, it does contrast, it does link to that childhood now the gelled black thorns so that bit gel black thorns of your hair right so it stops at here i'd gone over a little bit which it is a metaphor and it suggests that he no he's no longer a child because he styled his hair his prickly hair suggests he's unapproachable so you know it also talks about the distance children grow up and you unfortunately the bond sometimes isn't as strong as when they were little so So the next stanza, stanza three and four. So it's a four stanza poem. Slowly melting. I was brave as I walked with you to the front door, threw it open, the world's overflowing like a treasure chest. 
a split second and you were away, intoxicated. After you had gone, I went into your bedroom, released a songbird from its cage. Later, a single dove flew from the pear tree, and this is where it has led me, skirting the churchyard walls, my stomach busy making tucks, darts, pleats, hatless, without a winter coat or reinforcements of scar gloves. On reaching the top of the hill, I traced the inscription on the war memorial, leaned against it like a wishbone. The dove pulled freely against the sky, an ornamental stitch. I listened, hoping to hear your playground voice catching on the wind. And it does end on a sad note. It does end slightly on um, a sad note. So the mother is sad about leaving her son. She has feelings of anxiety and fear for her son's safety. And the poem focuses on the bravery and restraint, restraint of the relatives left behind when young people go to war. The poem shows the contrasting perspectives between the loss the mother feels and the feelings of freedom and excitement her son experiences. And we can hear that he, he's free, he's released like a songbird from its cage. There are lots of statements beginning with the first person, which gives us a strong impression of the mother's emotion. So there's a lot of I, I throughout. The uses of metaphors create images of war and bereavement, which are mixed with domestic images. And you can see that she talks about the tox, the dark, and these things that are, are considered to be traditionally women's sort of things to do, sewing. The simile of treasure chest shows that the world, so the simile it says the world overflowing like a treasure chest, that's your simile. And it shows the world from the sun's perspective and it makes it sound exciting and full of precious experiences but to the mother, this can seem scary as she's worried he will never return and which is understandable. The word intoxicated could simply suggest the boy's excitement or alternatively could symbolize his coming of age. He's old enough to drink and fight for his country and this signifies that he's no longer a boy and has become a man. So we talked about the simile, about his experience. Um, that first, the, the second line where it says through, the end, the line ends through, it's a real sudden movement and it suggests breaking a boundary. So I was brave as I walked with you to the front door and through it open. So it's almost as if she is allowing him to go. Then the bird, I went into your bedroom, it's line 24, released a songbird from its cage. It is symbolic of her son leaving. Let's look at um, the final stanza because there's a strong visual image of something small and beautiful where it talks about an ornamental stitch and it's you know, it's beautiful in a vast space, which represents her son. The last line, I listened, last two lines, I listened hoping to hear you, your playground voice catching on the wind. It links to leaving, the boy leaving to join the army. Also, it links with leaving to go to school. So, you know, we spoke about the blazer, that link with the blazer being both, it could be an army uniform and also a uniform for school. So that's there. We spoke about um, the sewing imagery um, in that in stanza three. So the sewing imagery conveys her nervousness 
and physical feelings of anxiety. And these can be interpreted to describe her physical feelings. And remember we said we are looking at her, the mother's emotional journey um, throughout this poem. So we looked at the reading, we looked at the first person, and you know we we saw the feeling of loss fear freedom on the part of the sun now we're going to go a step further and as a challenge you know i love to give you challenges in these tutorials just to stretch and push you further so what is the role of women during times of conflict i would like you to go and research that explore the role of women in the war what role did they play and how were they important? Because when we're analyzing, it's good to have background knowledge and this really helps your understanding. And you could create a collage which explores what you have learned and consider how the poet makes use of gender stereotypes within her poem. Or reflections really good to reflect why does the poet refer to the dove and how is we're making use of perspective Exp explain your ideas and as always when you do these tasks as extensions for me to see how well you have understood the tutorial please comment below so I can have a look at your comment I always answer comments and it's really good for you to interact with me.